Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Ashley Simon. You're tuning in to the third annual NFL Madden 23 HBCU Tournament. This tournament is part of the NFL's commitment to inclusivity and accessibility. 15 students from 11 historically black colleges and universities are here to compete for a $70,000 prize pool. But that's not just it. They're also here to network with the NFL as well as the NFL's partners. I have two students who are going to be joining me throughout this entire broadcast. We're part of the student showcase component of this entire tournament. Now, gentlemen, I would love for you to, to introduce yourselves because uh, this is going to be a fun time. These are, these are my co-hosts during the program. Let's start over here to my left. Thank you, Aaron. Well, I am Caleb Laverity. I am a one-year MBA candidate attending Florida a and University. Florida a and University. And then to my right. Hello, everyone. My name is Antoine Richardson. I attend Southern University. I'm studying the agri business. Now, Antoine, what can the viewers expect from this tournament? So what they can um, expect is these guys behind us, they had to um, win 16 qualifications, 16 qualifications to, um, to, come to, the, to come to the Super Bowl. And me and Kayla, we took a different route this year. This is our first time that um, this, um, this opportunity been opened up where we submitted videos. And with the videos, we had to basically tell us where, like, where we from and like, why we deserve to have this chance to come to the Super Bowl. But after that, um, Miss Aaron, she um, invited us to a Zoom call. And, you know, she took care of me. I had my wisdom teeth taken out when she called me, so I really couldn't talk too much, but she took great care of me. But um, with the Zoom call, they basically told us about um, resumes and um, LinkedIn accounts, something I never knew about, really. I never really paid attention to, but, you know, they brought it to my attention. And um, what I'd like to say is I want to thank y'all for the opportunity, too. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I wish I had this when I was in college, but more importantly, I'm happy that you all are getting this experience, and I'm sure it's going to be an exciting one for you all, and it's also going to be an exciting time for all the viewers who are tuning into this tournament. Now, let's get right into the action. I'm going to throw it on over to Tiffany Green and Micah Parsons at the desk. Thanks so much, Aaron, and from the caster's desk alongside the NFL linebacker with the Dallas Cowboys, Michael Parsons. I'm Tiffany Green, a proud graduate of Florida A&M University, might I add. So this is a big time tournament. In fact, the championship, ladies and gentlemen. All the gamers worked hard to get to this point, and now that they're here, whoo, do you feel the energy in this room, Micah? Yeah, I feel the intensity. Uh, I'm really excited to watch this matchup, and you know, I'm ready to run some phase myself just being in here. I know you're a big time gamer yourself, so you never get away from the game of football. Talk about a little bit of strategy about what both of these contestants, these finalists are going to do in this championship game. Uh, they got control the football, uh, make their opponent er earn it. Um, what keys is, don't give up no big plays. You know, make them earn it all over the field. Uh, make, make them play football to beat you. That's kind of always been the mindset. Don't let them cheese, don't let them uh, get out there, just make them play real football, and uh, it should be a good game. All right, let's introduce you to the finalists really quickly. Sharik Rutledge out of Livingstone College from North Carolina. That's in Salisbury, North Carolina. He's a sports management major, and he is a Philadelphia Eagles fan, so he's definitely excited about Super Bowl 57. His opponent also talking about fly, Eagles, fly. Deshaun Wade Necklews from North Carolina a and the computer engineering major. Now, folks, let's introduce you to, to the game rules and how this all shakes out in this Madden championship game. The NFL playoff style bracket with the top 13 players, and then we whittle it down to the final two, and players compete. And we saw them earlier get a chance to compete and what it was like. That $7,500 first place prize is what they're going for, but don't forget, that the runner-up will also get a nice little chunk of pocket change as well. And as our gamers are getting ready to get underway, Chiefs versus Packers, any clear advantage one side or another? Mm, I, that is interesting. Uh, the Chiefs uh, usually surprise me a little bit, but when you got Mahomes, especially uh, playing on the uh, current gen, um, that changes things, especially because how good Mahomes is and his ability to extend plays. Uh, it's going to be really interesting, and obviously with Rodgers having the gunslinger and things like that, but I think with the escape and everything that Mahomes has and the uh, dashing dead eye, it's definitely going to create a lot of things uh, going into this game uh, for our man Shells over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Woo! 
Get excited. You know, everyone's being quiet right now, but that's okay. Oh, we just gonna bring all the energy right up from this caster's desk as we are set to go. You're getting a live look yeah. in. That shell's right there. Yeah, that's some real matter. Woo. The cheese with no cheetah. I haven't <laughs> seen that too often. That's real matter. Game time, game mode. Hey, State Farm Stadium, beautiful facility, and that's where Super Bowl 57 will be played. And right here, the Chiefs and the Packers in this HBCU Madden tournament underway. All right, so we talked about this before as the Chiefs get the ball first. Oh, my God. Woo! Wait a minute on this return. Hold up. Wait a minute. Check Keep up. on going. So how does that provide some momentum as you're starting out in this game? So the best way to keep momentum for Shells is he got to score. He got to get three. He got to avoid turnovers or go get uh, seven uh, just because of momentum. And he has to eat up a lot of clock as he's doing it because obviously with him getting ball at half, if the score is tied or uh, he's not in a winning possession, then it allows him to take a lead going into the second half and it's going to lead him to play catch-up game. So uh, the key is to go into half with the lead and avoid any ties or uh, lead swings for our man Su Suave over here. All right, so they're still getting some things yep. so cleared out. All right, now. For uh, shows that have a great half, you expect him to lead at this half by at least seven or three. Oh, seven or three. Okay, so your favorite play. What's the first play you like to come out of the gate with? You like um, to pass or run? I, I like to pass for the most part because there's a no better feeling than dot somebody up the field. But obviously, if they come out heavy dollar, blitzing me, I incorporate the run, keep them honest, keep the integrity in the game. Grand prize, 75. Run trips tied in is definitely one of my favorite formations. All right, come out the gate with a penalty, so... They probably just giving each other that uh, that grace period to, uh, you know, set their offenses up without, uh, you know, uh, without sacrificing their timeouts. So it's a it's a common knowledge of, you know, he say, uh, go ahead and let me set up my playbook so we don't got to burn a crucial timeout, so we don't got to uh, use the timeouts before the half. Because every timeout matters in this game. The gamesmanship and, and just how everybody uses their strategy to their advantage. Uh, that's something that you mentioned as a, a big time gamer yourself, very common amongst them. It's, it's a respect thing. It's just, you know, and he's going to give it right back to him on his possession. So Shell's working with Mahomes out of the shotgun. Uh oh, this, this is real familiar to you. Yeah, this is familiar. Especially if he's in a three or something like that. Shells. Plenty of time with Mahomes searching down the field, looking, 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 and then it has to just throw it away. Defensively, you're looking at it through a, a defensive lens as mm -hmm. well. And so when you have a, a prolific quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, how do you try to slow him down in a game like this? Uh, you got to try to contain him. Uh, that's the, that's going to be the key. Uh, the best way to do it, you're going to have to contain him. And, uh, oh, that's a... Ooh. Oh, but broken up. Good play. As Valdez Sterling was the intended target. But again, defense proven strong early on for the Packers and the real yeah. suave. Yeah, the best way I think he's going to have to incorporate someone of uh, He's coming out and dollar two man. Uh, go ahead and, you know. He's in dollar two man. Best way is he's just got to incorporate someone to run even though he's squeezing the line. Checking to play, Mahomes back to pass. Shell's looking, 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 finds a man, and that's a first down. That'll move the chains and keep this yeah. drive going. And even that was interesting. You know, he decided to come in and block uh, Travis Kelsey, and he's uh, his best uh, receiver. So that was a uh, pretty that was pretty smart. In early feeling yeah. out period. Yep, the crossers is working. Valdez, obviously having that 94 speed is creating a lot of matchups for uh, his third his third corner. So it'll be interesting to match up and adjustments he's going to make. So far, a heavy pass, as you mentioned, Micah. Yep. Uh, and with a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, yes, you can do that. Um, but in terms here, to, to get on the board first, you talk about striking mm -hmm. distance, being able to, to take advantage of having the ball first. 
yeah. second and ten. You know, there's perks to it, especially if uh, it, it just all depends on the player. I think if Shells is an offensive player, then he wants to have the ball first. He wants to set the lead because now you're like now uh, with a lead. Now I'm not, I'm one stop away from closing this game out or you know taking away the distance of this game. Oh, I'm choosing to there, run with Mahomes. There go Mahomes. Like I said, this is this is current gen, uh, so the mobility and everything is going to be way more. He just got to be very careful. He doesn't get hit and it just slides when he has it. All right, on first down. Shells, plenty of time, plenty of time looking around. Can't find the open man being chased back and has to throw it out of bounds. Yeah, that's one thing about that's one thing about uh, when you rush three, you're going to get a whole lot more time. So it'll be interesting to see how Suave incorporates some blitzes and some other things in with this uh, cover two man uh, to catch him off guard. Shell's going through his play, but trying to dial up the right play here on second and 10. Yeah, it would be good to see a run come in here, get it down to second and five, or surprise him, especially with how many uh, passes he's given. Stays with trying to air it out, feels the pressure going, going back. And again, you talked about maybe some Something to try to throw him off now here, third down, an yeah. obvious passing situation. Uh, give him a different look, you know. Uh, obviously, he's starting to adjust better to that play he's running that uh, got him up the field, so try to throw a different look, different play. Uh, get Kelsey some looks, incorporate the running back. Here we go on third down. Yeah, he's stalking Kelsey. Great coverage, and then giving chase. Oh, the fumble picked up and recovered by the Packers. Suave able to come up with a big defensive play on third down and get on the board first. That's yeah. one way to snatch Big Mo. He, he, he's just too complacent with the pass right now. He's just, he has to incorporate some of the run. Uh, he's dropping most of his defense. He's rushing three. He has to find a way to uh, get the run game going. If that was me, I'm, I'm gonna try to get the run game going. So Suave on to attempt the extra point and goes up seven nothing. Now I'll, I'll tell you this: something that I realized about the Suave and his playing style. If he gets up on you early, you're gonna hear him talk a little bit of noise. He he's very confident from the DMV area. A real suave, that's part of his technique is to get in your head. We'll see the answer from Shells on now his yeah. second now, possession. Now, that, that, that hurts for Shells. Now he has to play really precise football. Um, it's mandatory he gets a stop just because uh, suave gets the ball I have. So he has to make something happen for sure. And he has to find a way to get kill, uh, Kelsey isolated. With his man, he's running this two-man. He has to find him get isolated. He has to understand or use him as a distraction. He's going to help with Kelsey, so he has to take those early on. He's got him deep a, down the seam, and oh, it's broken up. A number of Packers jersey around them had the step, got behind the defense, yeah. but. He just has to take his, his, what he has early. He has it early, he just has to take it. Um, like I said, he has to help with Kelsey because he has that ability, that offensive ability I was talking about. His is going to create way more separation and stuff out his breaks. So understanding that and just taking what he has early, and he's going to get that what he wants. Chills completes the pass underneath. Again, you mentioned trying to find a way to get Travis Kelsey involved. Hasn't been targeted so far in this game. We'll see if he will look to his tight end or perhaps keep the ball on the ground. Up for grabs along the sideline and interception. So back-to-back -back turnovers on the first two possessions and drives for Shells yeah. and his Chiefs. And he's not, he hasn't he hasn't ran the ball one time, you know. Um, he, he's, he has a three-man front. He has to he has to show the run, you know. He has to show something different. And, uh, you know, you kind of got to know your opponent. And that's why I was talking about those offensive abilities. You want to create that separation. This game is based off of abilities and be able to get people open. So now uh, with that great Packers defense, with, um, you know, uh, with the 
against the Chiefs, he can just sit in man coverage and say, uh, beat me. You have to find a dot. You have to throw dots. You can't beat me off of basic pass plays. Uh, and the one person you do, I'm going to double him, and I'm going to force you to make a read. So uh, it's a very smart play, and it's the, everything by Suave so far with his game plan. The timeout that you mentioned was, well, not timeout, rather, that penalty was taken, as you mentioned, uh, Suave, who has the ball for the first time on offense, so we'll get a chance to see the gunslinger in Aaron Rodgers and how he elects to use him or if he will mix it up a little bit more with Aaron Jones on the ground. Yeah, I mean, he's in a three-man front. You see how to run? It's better to get to, you know, second and eight or, you know, third and fours than it is to, you know, be sitting there trying to figure it out. Him coming in this five wide. But keeping the ball on the ground on the first two plays and sets up a very third and manageable. Exactly. You know, um, it's better than having third and tens, you know, because now you can, everything's open. Look even more run, you know? So uh, you can kind of see the two different game plans here. Um. And to playing with a little bit of a, a lead, do you have any um, different approach when you have a lead like this? Do you put the foot on the gas and keep going? Or do you try to, you know, milk the clock a little bit and milk just- Milk the clock. Mm -hmm. Just because um, he's in the best position. He got two stops, he's up seven. Um, he gets ball at half, so eat the clock, try to go up 10, 14, knowing that you get the ball at half and you can manage and get into a three-possession lead. And if you're shells, how frustrating is that on the other side? I mean, it's super frustrating. I mean, because uh, now you're in a position where you could be down three possessions and he can just control the game with the run game. Uh, the whole playbook's open. That's why I say uh, every possession of time matters because you want to end up getting them into a position where, well, you know they have to pass the ball. So now you can stay into a three-man front. You can stay into these positions. Uh, so Suave has him right where he wants him right now. Coming to the close of the first quarter, fine to let the time run out yep. as we move see, to the second. The yep, he, eat that clock up. Yep. Uh, you know, for shows to get back in the heat, he needs a huge stop right here. And he needs to put points on the board. Because right now he feels no pressure to do anything. Suave has been to this tournament before, a two-time finalist trying to bring home the bread. I'll tell you this, that guy DJ uh, was standing in the way of many, Eric Miner out of Claflin University, but now the field wide open as yep. Rutledge, AKA yep. Shells that's getting a, to the quarterback and that's what he needs. That's, that's a, a huge stop, that's a huge stop. The fact that uh, Suave wasn't man uh, managed to put this into a two possession game makes everything change. So now he has a chance to come get the ball, put points on the board, and try to make something before half. On the return, Shell's just trying to stay on his feet, find an opening, a little crease oh. there along that left side. Oh, he had it. He had a chance to break it, but brought down. Starting off with great field position, 3.51 to go in this Second quarter ball from. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Shells comes out right here. Uh, obviously throwing a pig, a fumble, getting stopped twice. If he changes anything, if he switches anything up. And look, he's he's came out in a, a in I formation. formation. Right. Uh, and let's see how this run does him. Elects to run it and maybe taking a, a page out of the book of what he saw from Suave. And getting the ground game going a little bit to open up the offense a little bit more yeah. in that passing game. Great Cut cuts. back. Oh, oh my, my goodness, he's got some room. Oh. He's still on his feet, oh. and he's got pay dirt. See, that's huge. That's huge. So now, not only did he score quick, now it forces, now it forces Suave to score or get points. If he gets another stop and puts the points, now we're right where he wants. And there's three minutes left, and he still has all three timeouts. So now he, this is perfect position for someone who got stopped twice, uh, gave up seven. Uh, this is perfect position for Shells right now. Instead of playing from the lead position, now Suave will play as if it's even field. It's yeah. seven all. And so we saw some conservative play calling uh, in his opening drive. Do you anticipate that he would do more of that or is he going to be more aggressive offensively here? 
He's probably going to stay a little conservative because in his eyes, he's still in no rush. You know, just because you get ball at half, so he's probably fine eating clock, taking three, knowing he gets ball at half. So you're still in no rush here. He's still, uh, uh, Suave's still in great position, uh, but it, it's, it's going to be up to uh, Shells to, you know, change that, you know, make him feel that discomfort, make him feel on the edge. Formation popular on both sides, and whoa, what a good stop there up front and loss of one on that run. It'll be interesting. Uh, Suave, like I said, with the limited abilities that the Packers have, um, he hasn't, you know, shown anything. He's tried to uh, show this run, but nothing's been effective for him so far offensively. Uh, I would probably would have came out something a little bit better. And he's still staying to it on second 11, which is very surprising. So now you know he's going to throw it on third down. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure of the predictable play style right now. It went backwards four yards, and now third and long. And he has, oh, he let go of Woo! He's got his man along the left side and first down and extra yard. He let go of the route. He had the, everything covered. I'm surprised he let go of that. I was probably going to get back to the run. And... So he's in no rush. Yep. Down to the two minute warning and so Here's how he'll operate if he can get the chance to score going into the half, just like you said, put up points on the board. Yeah. I mean, Suave better than me. I would have tried to step on his throat already. <laughs> you get, you, I get a stop, I get a pick. I'm looking to be up 21 nothing already. You know what I'm saying? He's going for the end zone, oh. and that oh. one was nearly oh, picked off, and it is in the end zone. They oh. bring it out. Whoa, oh. what a dangerous play. Oh, out of all things he could have done, oh, that wasn't the play to come out in a two-minute warning. That was not the play. Um, he forced that. Like I said, the limited abilities, uh, there's not going to be a lot of things open, so it, that's why it really surprised me that a team chooses the Packers, especially with Devontae going. Devontae and Valdez, you know, they lost a lot of weapons this year, so uh, I wouldn't pick a team just because of uh, Rodgers, especially if I'm not going to use them. And and thus far, he hasn't used them as much as he's gone to the ground game now, yeah. third and six yeah. upcoming for yeah, Shells and his Chiefs. If, if you're banking on a run game and a receiver, then you could have went, you know, Vikings route. You could have went, uh, you could have went Vikings. You could have went. Uh, 49ers, you could have went Eagles, you know, so it's definitely a little surprising on the team of choice uh, these guys decided to choose, especially Philly guys, uh, how, how loaded that Philly team is. On things up, getting everybody in place, and Shells with Mahomes, back to pass, looking, 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 dangerously close to the end zone and yeah. has to throw it away. He, he has to take what he's giving him. Uh, he has to look at his routes and show um, he has things open. He has to take them. I got to ask, Micah, who's your team on Madden? Uh, you know, I'm the type we could use any team. Three randoms. Three randoms. You so cold, it don't matter. Yeah, it really don't. I mean, some teams, it, it's, it's rough, but... Uh, you know, I, I feel like I like to use all players because I do a lot of franchise, so I like to know what every player can do, uh, what I'm going to get out of the player. On fourth and six, Ooh. and he's able to convert down the middle of the field. I probably call a timeout here uh, just to save some clock. He has three timeouts. Look how much clock went yeah. on. Yeah. And he's wasting and still it adjusting and wasting at the line. He has a full complement of timeouts to work with. So he'll probably so be clock. able to just get one more player there. I understand that, that 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 last 40 seconds of management was bad by Shells. Uh, he, I feel like that was a really bad clock management right there. Uh, wow. Uh, he gave 35 seconds of the game away. And th those seconds, uh, it might not affect it here, but uh, down the game, we never know how this could turn out in this third and fourth, and it could cost them. It could cost them. 
Uh, you got the timeouts right there. Why not use it, you know? Especially when you know it's going to be accelerated clock. Everyone's got to get to the ball. Uh, I didn't understand that right there. Suave now playing in the trail position here at the half. And this is something where he'll have to go back and think about the way things played out through the first two quarters and adjust. Thanks, Tiffany. Yeah, it's been quite a showing. I've been enjoying this competition and we will continue on. But first, I have something special for you all. It's called the Experience Ship. It's a behind the scenes video showing the students interaction with the NFL during Super Bowl week. It's really great. Take a look. So, Jesse, you got to kick it with 15 HBCU students that yeah. flew in yeah. across the country. What is that like? What does that mean to you to be able to just be able to have those words with them? Man, it's always an honor to, to be able to, you know, come talk to the younger kids in there and try to give them that career confidence or give them that extra experiences like this. A lot of people don't see this type of event or organizations that's coming together, working uh, with different students all around the country. It's cool for me to be a gamer and seeing these wow. kids in there being gamers. So Aaron, what does it mean to have someone like Justin come here and be part of this experience? This truly really is an experience of a lifetime. A lot of these students have that opportunity that Darrell has put together, the Microsoft folks that were here today, you being here, life-changing for them. I think your discussion around having confidence and being true to yourself mm -hmm. and finding what you are best mm -hmm. at is exactly what these students need to hear. I'm happy to be here, happy to be talking to the younger kids and giving them some encouraging words. Joining us now, a special guest. Yeah, you see him run all over the field. Strong safety for the Los Angeles Chargers. We're talking about Derwin James joining us now. Thank you so much for your time. My boy Christopher Webb, a big time J Derwin James fan. So, Chris, I'm going to let you take it away. Delaware State has primed you and prepped you for this moment. You got the stage. What do you ask, Mr. James? Absolutely. Uh, appreciate you taking your time out your day. I know it's busy, Derwin. Um, like she said, lifelong Chargers fan, so even having this moment, very appreciative of it. Uh, my first question for you, actually, um, what do you think so far in your career has been your biggest or most memorable moment? Uh, I'd say my most memorable moment uh, would have to be probably for my rookie year, you know, coming into the NFL as a young guy, trying to, you know, make a way in the league and, you know, establish myself, you know, as a as a top player. And um, I feel like I did a great job in that year doing that. So I always look back to that year. And thinking about making a three-time Pro Bowl selection, so you've been doing your thing thing in the process. When you think about some of the initiatives that the NFL has, and more specifically, we're talking about this uh, 2023 HBCU Madden Tournament and the initiatives to really reach out and connect to a more diverse and uh, broad base of, of fans. Um, what do you think about something like this? Um, I, I think it's great, and I, I think it allows a, a lot more opportunities for uh, people to just to s fulfill their dreams that they have, you know, that they may not get the same opportunity as others. And I, I, I feel like it's just another platform, and the more we can do providing these platforms for that, I feel like we'll get the results that we want and the change that we need. Now, I've got to ask you, how much of a gamer are you? Oh, I'm a big gamer. I probably game just as much as uh, anyone you could think of that's a gamer. In terms of um, your uh, philosophy in, in, in attacking um, in Madden more specifically, like, you know, what's your strategy? What, what, what do you find to work well for you? Uh, I like to just run, you know, the basic plays, you know, kind of figure, figure my opponent out, you know, see what they like to do. And then, you know, I just like to make them have to make decisions. You know, I don't like to play conservative the whole time, but, you know, I just like to figure them out, and then once I figure it out, you know, apply pressure to them. All right, now, Micah was sitting up here uh, with me earlier, and so if you guys had a chance to switch positions, I'm curious to know who would be better at the other position. Uh, I think I would definitely be better. Um, I think he'll be getting routed up at, at DBS safety. Um, I, I definitely feel like I can go to defense end and get some sacks. All right, Chris. Now, you had some great questions for Derwin as well, so we're going to go a little bit more under the helmet. Uh, Derwin, so I know you're already a busy man, for being an NFL player, being a family man, having your own endeavors. How are you able to balance that all, all the time? Because I know it's a lot on your plate. What do you recommend? Oh, uh, man, I, I recommend, like you said, being organized, being balanced, because I feel like, 
having your house in order allows you to do so much more and, and do more in the job when you're going to do your job. So I, I feel like just me off the field, having that clear mind, that clear space, you know, and I'm, I'm a person that like to, you know, have that, ha to, to know what I'm doing going into the day. That way I'm already p preparing my mind and my body for it and, and ready to do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so like we spoke on a little bit earlier, these types of NFL initiatives, um, these types of events, how much do they mean and what do they mean to you? How special are they? Man, they're so special. Um, I feel like these events where we get the show, like I said earlier, from where people get to showcase at these HBCUs and get to showcase what they got, and I feel like it's just a way for them to display everything they work for and the dreams that they have, and I, I feel like that's one of many things that we're going to do. All right, a couple of questions for you before you go. Uh, curious to know, what does Derwin James do with his off time? In the off season, I know you're a terrific football player, but what else do you like to get into? Uh, I'm a guy, I like nature, you know, I'm a guy I like being outside. I like, you know, whether that's riding the boat or, you know, in, in, um, in the sand, you know, whatever it is. I just like getting outside and, you know, having a good time and enjoying nature. I think you being a Florida boy probably plays into that, represent Haines City, yeah. Polk County. <laughs> yeah, yeah, outside, you outside all day. So, I mean, you find stuff to do and um, make make things happen. Lastly, I'm gonna ask the biggest goal that you have outside of football, what would that be? Uh, being, being the best father I can be for my son. Um, I feel like I'm like his superhero, so, you know, everything I do, he kind of mimic. So just send the, send the standard for him and send the foundation for him. I feel like just, just doing that. All right, appreciate your time. Lasting or parting words from Christopher Webb, what you got for Mr. Derwin James? Um, just once again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, not for only myself being a Charger fan, but everybody that gets to hear your words of wisdom, um, the things you shared today. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed, and we always will appreciate it. And boat gang or don't bang. Yeah, man, appreciate the love, man. Appreciate the support for you supporting me, man. I'm going to keep trying to make plays, keep making some plays, and, man, being that role model, man, appreciate y'all. That was awesome to see. And it shows you that gaming can provide opportunities for people in many shapes and forms, not just competitively, but also professionally. I'm sure the students have been enjoying this overall experience, including the competition, which means we got to head on back to it and I'm going to throw it on over to the desk. Thanks so much, Aaron. What an outstanding opportunity it is for these HBCU students, and more importantly, the commitment from the NFL and its partners to make sure that they have this enriching type of experience ship. I wish I had something like this when I was in school. And um, I've got to ask you, like, what do you think of this all? Like a week's paid vacation, if you will, uh, but also it's working, right? You're working to get experience, connections, networking, and all of it through gaming. What do you think about it all? Uh, it's truly a blessing. You know, something that you love and something that you're really good at is love to get that recognition, um, letting people know you understood, you're seen, that feeling of comfort, and for, you know, the NFL to do this is really amazing. Uh, getting these kids and these young men out here to have fun and got a chance to earn some money at that too. So uh, it's an amazing opportunity and we're, I'm, I'm appreciative I'm here and I'm pretty sure they're even more appreciative that they're doing this. Now, uh, during that break, we had a chance to talk with Derwin James, your peer, and uh, you know, he had something to say. We said, hey, what if you guys swap positions? Who would be the better of the two at the other's position? He said he'd be a better linebacker. What do you say about that? Uh, you know, I can't I can't say a lot because Derwin James is all pro at two positions. I'm all pro at two positions, so I guess we each got to go for a third position and see the truth about that. And, uh, you know, I could get some reps at safety. It's whatever. <laughs> he says he's also cold on the sticks like you. Let's get back into the action. Second half of our Madden HBCU Tournament Championship game right now between Shells and the real Suave. And right now, Shells on top, 10 to seven at the half, playing with the Chiefs. Now, there's a difference, too, between next gen and current gen. So they played next gen all leading up and now playing current gen. How does that uh, play into how you approach each game? Uh, it plays into a huge part, but the key is to see Suave come out here and 
make something like get a turn. Something has to change. He has to he has to use this possession to uh, score, and that'll be crucial. If not, you're giving our man shells here at a two possession game going into the second half will be even bigger. So. Oh, it's going to come down to this drive. You know, just drive and maybe a little bit of luck. Shells, a.k.a. Sharik Rutledge out of Livingstone College and the real Suave representing North Carolina a and Deshaun Neklos. Back to pass and Aaron Rodgers completes it, but really nowhere to go in the flat. Well played defensively from Shells. Third down com coming up. Yeah, earlier we said we wanted to see him mix in some more pass on second down. Uh, he's doing that, but we want to see some more intermediate shots, uh, especially with him playing much of this shell defenses and things like that. But he's doing a great job switching up. It, it'll be crucial to see what he does. Third down and is able to make the completion, so keeps the drive alive. Yeah. Important for the Suave, I'm gonna put that up there a little bit closer Thank to your you. partner. <laughs> we yeah. gotta hear what you gotta say. Yeah, that, and, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about when I said intermediate throws. Uh, tell them to mix it up. It's all been shots and short, so it's easy to do that with your flats and stuff like that, but uh, you're gonna get them comebacks and uh, you got, you're gonna have some seam throws a lot in these uh, uh, windows. Okay, a, uh, using Aaron Jones on the ground, and that's how yeah. he started out this game, right, mm -hmm. Micah? That's how he started off, but you see with him mixing that pass on first down, on third down and second down. Now he has to play a little bit more honest. Um, and let's see what he does with it, though. When you put though in that mix and change of direction, the way Shell's been doing it, and now he, uh, Suave's doing it, you've been seeing a lot of bigger splash plays coming out of both of these guys. Calling an audible at the line. Suave looking back on first down, trailing, trailing back. Mm and throws it out of bounds, but a he flag had, on the play. He had someone wide open. He missed it. Um, I'll be interested to see if he come back to that running back wheel route. I think intentional grounding was called mm -hmm. on that one. Lost it down. Now. I mean, that's a crucial. Yikes. That's crucial. Lost it down at 10 yards. That's crucial. That man to man. Comes oh, back to get it. What a throw what and a catch. catch. Yeah, I mean, that's why they want Rodgers. That slinger. You can't make that throw with anybody else. And you can hear the gallery getting behind Suave after making that yep. completion. And you see Suave starting to yeah. rub his leg, feeling a little bit. Yeah, get your momentum. Start cruising, you know, mixing in the run, the pass. Keep doing it. You know, don't don't be, you can't, in this game, you can't be a sitting duck, as they say. But this is the hardest place to score in the game. Indeed. Shorter field now. Goal first line. and goal inside the red zone. And yep. wisely throwing it away to give himself another chance. So we see some of the adjustments that the real Suave made coming out mm -hmm. of the half. What are you seeing from Shells defensively? Uh, one thing I'm saying shows defensively, he's adjusted. Uh, he's mixing up his coverage. He's not keeping anything the same. Um, I know you saw the one he carried up the deep over and he manned up the safety in the slot to take away any type of seam throws if he wanted to do that. Um, right now, he's he's doing some great stuff on the defense, but he even switched up his defense right now. Um, he's dropping more defenders back, making the windows that much smaller. Um, but a hold of three right here would be huge for him. I would agree with you as a big... Third down, upcoming here. Wave taking his time. Looking, 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 has a man, and touchdown into the end zone and grabbing the lead right back on the opening drive of the second half is the real Suave. Yeah, but, you know, um, that's why him leading, I say if he led by three or seven, be huge because now it's a three and four point game versus seven. So either way, uh, we're at the point where there'll be no ties and there's going to be a person that swings to either take a lead every time and score or tie. So Now, what are you reading about the body language? Because what I've seen from Shell so far is this is a cool and collected customer. You mm -hmm. know, he, he is completely focused and he hasn't shown anything outside of he's in control. Right. Um, it is, he is in control. Um, this is exactly the position where he wants to be.
because the way the time is now is if he goes score, he can eat up the rum in the third, and it's leading for him to have that last possession last. So that's kind of where you want to you want to have the ball last. You want to be able to end the drive on you and pray you deep, or you got to pray your defense gets a stop. Everyone anxiously looking on, 139 to go in the third quarter. Patrick Mahomes at the helm for Shells. He elects to hand it off and keeps the ball on the ground, and right there was Suave to stop him. No gain on the play. Second down upcoming, play action pass. Looking, has a man open, has a couple. Goes underneath. And third and manageable here. What a play, the sack on third down to force. Fourth down, and you saw the excitement there mm -hmm. from the real Suave. Yeah, anytime you're in the center and you, you send pressure, I mean, it's almost hard, especially with the play action, because uh, it's the animation. So you kind of stay away from play action, really, especially when they're in a the five man, because you never know who they're sending, what they're dropping. Um, so that was a great switch up uh, from his second down to his third down play. His third down, you know, he didn't have no pressure that time he, he sent him. Now, what we know to be very true in Madden is you don't punt the ball very often. You're going to go for it, even if you're deep into your own territory. On fourth and 11, just heaves it up and a turnover on downs. And now great field position for the Suave. The real Suave. Mm hmm that's a huge momentum play. That's a huge stop. Um, man. Would you have gone for it there or would you have punted it I away? probably would have punted. Just because it's still a one possession game. Now you're leaving him position to either score or take the three. Versus if you punt, you could probably stop him at mid-range and uh, he can't get anything. Well, after three quarters, you see the Suave and his Packers leading and an all-important fourth quarter upcoming as we get it started. This championship round of the HBCU Madden Tournament. Oh, hit the boom right before getting into the end zone, but inching that much closer now, ball on the one yard line. Mm -hmm. This is you think to just punch it in with Aaron Jones? Yeah. We learn from Marshawn. You always run it. So he's got a couple of downs to work with here. Try to keep the ball on the ground. Make it a two-possession ball game. Yeah, that's the goal right there. Two possessions. Make him earn it. Flings it out. Steps in. Another score for the real Suave. Yeah, this, this game, man. if you only score right here, he, now, now this is what I'm talking about. Um, he he messed up coming out half, um, you know, lot two, let him score, the momentum shifted. Now this is the point where it's going to be a little predictable. Now he could drop more. He could, He's going to set a combination of blitzes and drops uh, just because he don't know what to expect. He can't be honest and keep it with the run game as he was going because uh, he don't want to lose too much clock. Right. And we saw Shells really start out this ball game mm -hmm. with his aerial attack. But, you know, his success really came from the ground game. And now he's back to this dollar where he knows the pass is going to be coming and things like that. So it'll be interesting how he manages to, uh, you know, get this going. The pressure, pressure. Now, obviously, playing defense, how, like how much do you look forward to this even I on mean, the real field of play, you just yeah, sit Sh back. Sh Shells is better off going into bunch or uh, something like that, especially with this DB2 fire that he's running. Uh, you know, verticals kills this play. Uh, he's always going to have a seam route. He's always going to have quick passes or slants. Uh, the best thing to do is to get the ball out fast and take advantage of uh, those outside things that he's trying to uh, exploit on his defensive side. Second and 10 for the Chiefs. 
Mm-hmm. Shell's looking, looking. Look, look how many people he's dropping, you mm-hmm. know? And that's because he knows the ball has to. He's going to make him earn every yard and kill the clock, you know? So um, it, it sucks when people have this type of lead, especially when they're uh, good Madden players. These are outstanding Madden players that they had to sift through a number of different rounds to make it mm-hmm. to this point. And Patrick Mahomes may have been hit on the way, and that one broken up. So fourth and four. Could very well be this could be a ball game. This, <laughs> this ball game right ball here. Game. This is the ball game. Seven thousand five hundred dollars on the line. That goes to the winner, Sean Wade. Necklos trying to make sure he can secure the bag. Ball game right here. He's going right back to the gun trips. Look, look, he's standing on Kelsey. He has a throw to. Looking, looking. And that is it. Into the hands of the real Suave. And you heard him. He, he felt it, too. He said, look, I, I had time to pin yeah, my ears back, that, look, and just and, and, wait. And that's that's exactly why I said it. It's based off abilities. Um, they're not necessarily a team I, I would use the Chiefs or the Packers based off the lack of the abilities they have offensively, especially with the man uh, coverage you're allowed to run in this game, the lack of separation. And when you only have one player that can kill you, um, you know, Pacheco's a good game, but without the abilities that, you know, Aaron Jones have, that's what increases your run success. So uh, it's a it's a big game changer, you know? So uh, I would have chose a team with definitely way more abilities, uh, knowing what my opponent's gonna wanna do, especially in a man coverage game and the uh, fire pressures. I was asking, you know, both of these gentlemen, just how much time they spend on their game consoles each day. And said, well, you know, probably about four hours dedicated to Madden and other games. Yeah, you, you, you got to. That's, and that's how you stay on top of the league. I probably put anywhere between sometimes 30 minutes if I don't like what's going on early to, you know, three, four hours to put on the day and my, my type of schedule. I could right here, fourth and nine. Yeah, he almost got burn the time out, yeah. so, like save some clock. Like I would let all of this whole clock go and take and, the penalty. And you see, the real Suave doesn't even have the controls in his hands. He's mm-hmm. just like, we just gonna let this thing ride out. Exactly. I'll tell you this, pretty tense moments in that first half, right? I mean, it was a 10-7 ball game, Shells yeah, he, took the lead he, he, he into the locker room. It's almost like he should have burned the timeout just to save a little clock, but he really should have called timeout uh, right before that two-minute warning because they, they got a free one, so they made up for it. Save him about 40 seconds. Well, that was one of the things that you pointed out at the start like how important it was for A, who's going to have uh, the, the possession game was important, but also time management and clock yeah. management. Now nah, he has, a, I mean, he, he almost needs a deep shot. You know, he needs something now. It's tough. He's going he's gonna to be dropping everyone, sitting on everything. Um, I'd be surprised if he, if he gets anything deep right here. Yeah, there go. Look, he took it away, but then it comes over. I'm surprised he's Ben didn't come to the bunch, um, based on what he was doing. That's exactly what I called that he should have ran last uh, to the same uh-huh. to the same the four verticals. And I was like, uh, this is why I wanted him to run before. It kills it. Um, and now you know he's all the man because the safety corner went over. So now uh, you can see exactly what he's in. You're going to get the matchups you want. There go Kelsey. See, he has to throw as soon as they break. And that one picked off, and that one seals it yeah. right there. Um, he missed a lot of pe- players on his break um, time, and he had open guys. He just didn't take it. I don't know if he didn't trust it, but you got to trust it. Um, you know, it's tough. Um, uh, but Suave played a great defensive game, and defense wins championships at the end of the day. Um, Those two important turnovers in the first half. We saw the scoop and score on the first possession. He also picked off 
a couple yeah. of Shell's passes. And it seems like the timeout button and stuff still not working. Uh, from the first half, apparently I heard that was what happened. Why well, didn't and it didn't happen again? So uh, game's over. Congratulations to Suave for winning the grand prize and everything else. And you know, uh, this was a great one. Seventy-five hundred dollars going to the champion of the 2023 HBCU Madden Tournament, Deshaun Wade Necklos. Can I get an Aggie pride for the North Carolina A&T computer engineering major? Boy, I tell you, there there was a there was a challenging road to get to this point, Micah, and it's never easy. And so he was able to pick up a win in this one, and he's hoping that his uh, Philadelphia Eagles can pick up a win Sunday nope. <laughs> in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Well, he's got some one down. Let's see what happens to his other team. Indeed. I mean, you think about all of the fabulous swag that they receive. Obviously, the $70,000 in pool of cash prizes that shared amongst the participants, but also the lifelong relationships that are built, the networking mm -hmm. opportunities that Aaron uh, underscored uh, about this experience ship. It's just been absolutely fantastic. And partner, it has been a pleasure to sit next to you as well, man. Let me just just, yeah. just, just rub right here. Yeah, yeah let the greatness kind of come yeah, on over I, this way. I really appreciate that, you know. Um, and like you said, this is an amazing opportunity for all these guys. Because not only is it fun to play the Madden, but you get to laugh, you get to build better. Oh, what'd you do here? How'd you adjust it? You learn something new anytime you with great competition and stuff like that. So uh, these type of events and in person are always great. And these guys might become lifelong friends and meet up. You know, there's there's friends that I met on franchises that I meet up when I go to other cities now. So uh, the brotherhood we build off these video games is one of a kind. I love the connection uh, that has been made in eSports continuing to grow. You can catch it on an HBCU campus near you. A lot of these guys participating in their eSports clubs and even being offered as a major. So that just speaks to how it continues to grow. Uh, for Aaron Ashley Simon and Micah Parsons, I'm Tiffany Green saying so long. Woo-wee! Once again, congratulations to Deshaun Wade Necklos, our 2023 HBCU Madden Tournament Champion. We officially have our crowned winner of the NFL Madden 23 HBCU Tournament. Deshaun, hailing from ANT, how does it feel to win? Aggie Pride, feels great, feels great. That's it. I mean, listen, you just won not only $7,500, but a beautiful prize over there. I see Xbox, I see tablets. Like, come on, you, you, you have to be more excited. I'm not going to lie, I'm just speechless. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to win. I'm not supposed to come here and lose. Like, my mindset going to anything, I'm supposed to win. I like that mindset. And I have a fellow student co-host here who has a few questions for you as well. All right, so Deshaun, I know this is your second year actually coming to this tournament. So I wanted to know, kind of, you weren't fortunate enough to win last year, but like, what did you take from last year to ensure that you put in the work and do what you have to do so that you can come back with a victory this time? Uh, I say from last year, I can say I didn't really take Madden like really seriously. So this year, I competed in the MCS tournaments. I practiced way more. Had my boys help me out. Shout out to my boys, Mel, Sim, like, and my boy Brax. They always pushed me to play Madden. Like, they made me take it seriously, actually. And so they stayed up all week this week, labbing with me, giving me defenses to run and different things like that. All right, great. And, uh, and lastly, what advice would you give someone, a uh, student, that is willing and interested in actually getting involved in this tournament and then to be successful as well? I just say just keep practicing, keep labbing, you know, with your friends. And if you want to play me, just hit me up. You see my game attack. <laughs> you heard him? Hit him up. Well, I hope that you had fun in this entire experience. And once again, congrats for being our champion. And I hope all the viewers who are tuning in had some fun as well watching this competition. Now, this is not it. This is the beginning of the NFL's commitment to accessibility, inclusivity, as well as gaming. On behalf of myself, Aaron Ashley Simon, Tiffany Green, Micah Parsons, the HBCU students, this is not the end. It's only the beginning for the NFL's commitment to inclusivity, accessibility, as well as gaming. On behalf of myself, Aaron Ashley Simon, Tiffany Green, Micah Parsons, the HBCU students, as well as the NFL team and NFL partners, we want to say thank you so much. We hope you had a blast. 
and uh, we hope you enjoy the Super Bowl tomorrow as well. Catch you later.